Hello students. Today we are going to learn about figures of speech. And before we start today's session, let me ask you a question. Would you like to watch a dull, boring movie? Or a very interesting, amusing and a refreshing movie? Of course, your answer is going to be interesting and amusing movie. In the same way, our language and writing should be interesting, clear and refreshing. And how can you do that? Yes, we can do that with the help of figures of speech. Now let us see what are figures of speech. A figure of speech is a word or phrase using figurative language. Language that has other meaning than its normal definition. In other words, figures of speech rely on implied or suggested meaning rather than a dictionary definition. In other words, we can say that figures of speech are figurative language. They add color to your language. They are like decorations, like we all like to decorate our home. And when we decorate our home, it adds beauty. It gives us a new vision. In the same way, if we add figures of speech in our writing, it adds color to our writing. It becomes more interesting. Now let us see the importance of figures of speech. Figures of speech simply add color to the English language. It also adds flavor to writing and makes the experience of reading so much more enjoyable. It brings beauty, emphasis and clarity to what could have been just a mundane and improvised rendition. That means that when you add figures of speech in your writing, it brings out beauty. It doesn't look boring or dull. Your writing enhances with the help of figures of speech. Now let us see some common figures of speech. Some common figures of speech are simile, metaphor, personification, alliteration, hyperbole, idiom, onomatopoeia, and there are many more figures of speech. But today we are going to you uh, do some figures of speech which we commonly use. Now let us see the first figure of speech. It's simile. A simile directly compares two different things or unrelated things. The simile usually is a phrase that begins with the words as or like. Now here are two examples of simile. Sean is as cunning as a fox. Now here we are comparing Sean's cunningness with a fox. You all know that a fox is an animal that is famous for its cunningness. It is a very sly animal. So here we are comparing Sean's cunningness with a fox. The kids fought like cats and dogs. Have you seen how the cats and dogs fight? Chasing one another, growling, howling. In the same way here we are comparing that the kids were fighting same as the dogs and cats fight. And here you can see that we have used, in the first sentence we have used the word as and in the second we have used the word like. Now let's come to the next figure of speech. It's alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of the same consonant sounds at the beginning of the words that are in close proximity to each other. This repetition of sounds brings attention to the lines in which it is used and creates more oral rhythm. Note that alliteration is dependent on the beginning sounds and not the beginning letters. Now you have to remember this. Alliteration is the beginning sounds and not the beginning letter. Examples of alliteration. She sells, she sells by the seashore. In this Example, we are repeating the letter S and it's like a tongue twister. Let's come to the next one. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled papers. So I think by the time I come to the next uh, figure of speech, you can just try reading out a little fast. Now let's come to the next one. I hope you had a nice time doing the alliteration and the example. 
Now come to the next one. Repetition. Repetition is a literally device that repeats the same words or phrases a few times to make an idea clearer and memorable. Alliteration makes specific emphasis on sounds in words, while repetition engages in repeating the same words or sequence of words to make a point in the written word. Now, alliteration is different from repetition. Repetition is the repetition of the words, not the letters or the sound. Like here you can see the example, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. We are repeating the words again and again to bring the emphasis. And the next example, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Here also we are repeating the words again and again. Personification. Now the next one is personification. In which a thing, an idea or an animal is given human attributes. The non-human objects are portrayed in such a way that we feel they have the ability to act like human beings. Now here are examples. My alarm clock yells at me to get out of the bed every morning. Here, the alarm clock is given a human attribute. Like your human, uh, like the alarm clock is yelling at you, is shouting at you that you have to come out of your bed because it's time and it's morning. The moon played hide and seek with the clouds. Here, the moon again is given a human quality that it is playing hide and seek with the clouds. Like it's going behind the clouds, coming out of the clouds in the same way as we play hide and seek. And if you remember the poem which we have done, the squirrel, in that poem also the poet has used this personification. Can you recall the line? An overcoat of grey. This line is a personification because the poet is giving a human quality to the coat by saying that the squirrel looks like wearing an overcoat of grey. Hyperbole. It means excess that uses extreme exaggeration to make a point or show emphasis. Hyperbole, now you have to be careful with the pronunciation because the spelling is a little different, but the pronunciation is hyperbole. Is an unreal exaggeration to emphasize the real situation. It has a humorous effect created by an overstatement. Here you can see an example, I'm so hungry that I could eat a horse. Now can you even imagine eating a horse? But here you are exaggerating your hunger. You are saying that I'm so hungry that I can eat whatever comes my way. You are exaggerating your hunger. In the same way, I told my sister a million times not to do that. You cannot possibly say something a million times. But here you are exaggerating your emotion that you have been telling your sister a million times not to do that. Again, Harry is so tall that he can touch the clouds. Here again, it's an exaggeration. The height has been exaggerated. So it's an exaggeration. Now, students, I hope you have understood it. I'm going to upload notes and assignments based on figures of speech. And I'm very sure that you had a whale of time doing, uh, doing this figures of speech. And I want all my children to be as cheerful as a lark. Thank you and have a nice day.